All right, we are continuing to design our posters, which are a combination of a background. My background is a combination of, of all these different layers. I can put them all into a folder, into a group. Right. Background. I can still play with it, but if I turn it off, it just looks like that. Right. But it's important to have that background for when you color your text. So you can see things like offsets, like this white st stroke I put around it. And now I'm using digital coloring techniques to color behind my type, right? And if I want the white stroke on the inside and the outside, I can do it that way, because notice my inspiration here, if I want to try to match this type solution, it has a white stroke on the outside and on the inside. And then it has another stroke beyond that. So I'll show you how we can do all of that. So I'll take my stroke size down a little bit thinner. I have the coloring behind that, which looks like this in this gradation. Because this is rasterized, I can turn off that, that gradient effect anytime I want. And I can always just play with it in different ways, its angle, its scale, exactly how long these stretches are. Right, so there's lots, lots of options to be had. So say I like something like that, let me see. a little bit more in the up. There we go. And there's much more we could do, of course, but I'm keeping it pretty straightforward. Okay, so there's my type around it. Now, what about this other echo? This is called the double offset. So it goes white, black, white, black, right? So how can I get that? I can duplicate the text layer, move it behind everything, <clears throat> and then Command T and expand it with Option. Right? And it will grow it. But there's another way that I can get it exact. I'm going to duplicate the black type. Then I'm going to rasterize it. And I'm going to rasterize not just the layer, which is a vector, but rasterize the layer style as well. So now all of those layer styles, all of that white is now just pixels in the layer. And then I can put a stroke around that. And this time I'm going to do a black stroke, thinner. And now I have white on black on white on black. And then if I don't want it on the inside, I just set that behind my other coloring. So this one moves down. There we go. So now I have coloring of man up very similar to this. Now for Tikor, if I want all of that same effect, I can just copy those same things. The first I'll need a new flat type layer with the same effects, but I need to fill it within these shapes. So I go to my top layer of type and I hold down shift and I fill all these in. Oops, but that has openings. Oh, that complicates things a little bit. So I can do all the ones that don't have openings. I think it's just the C that has an opening, right? And then I'm just going to fill it. Oh, I got to move to my copy. There we go. Fill it. There we go. And now how do I fill that C?
I can do it by making a duplicate, rasterizing it with the effects turned off, and now it's touching, and now if I select it, nope, alright, so, really makes you try to understand what you're doing, but I'm going to paint in the tiny sharp brush and connect these lines just so it's contained. And then I can select it. Come on. Is there any other opening? My spot illustration is hiding it. Ah, right there. Connect it. Then I can grab it, and then I can fill it on my flat type layer copy. Ooh. It doesn't actually matter what I fill it with because it's the gradient overlay that's affecting it. Right. Okay, there, then I can erase that, and I have the effect. Okay, now notice... I have the red in this one and then just yellow in this one, so how can I fix that? This is all rasterized, so I just take this out of that one. And then I can play with the gradient effect on my lower one. And maybe I want totally different colors. Like pinks. So normal mode. There we go. And let's increase this gradient. Yeah, I kind of like that. Maybe I push the red a little bit here. That's a lot of color, but it shows you the kind of things that we can do. Now, what if I don't want the double offset on it? Right, I can move that above. And then if I don't want this on it, that outline, because it's interfering with my line art a little bit, I can just delete that from the layer above. So what we're doing is we're rasterizing from vector smart objects, but we still always have our vector smart objects in there. Okay, now if I'm happy with it, the one last thing I can play with is the layer styles on the actual black type. Instead of it being solid black, maybe I want it to be a different color like a dark blue or grayish blue. And that works a little bit better with my illustration. And I can always play with other effects too, besides the stroke, I can give it a satin effect. Where it kind of waves through. So it's darker and lighter, even though it's all just dark blue. That works pretty well. And now I turn off my background and I have my my color solution. Now what I like to do is put all of my color into one folder, like so, and then I duplicate that folder and merge it. So even though you still have the smart objects there, now all of this is just rasterized into one layer, which allows me then to do this, image adjustments, hue saturation, 
and then I can just play with the hue variations on it. And with how saturated it is, I can desaturate it and lighten it and push it in different ways. And I like to play with variations. So now I'm going to play with levels. Contrast it. There we go. So I have two options here. I have that and I have this. And then I can also do that same thing with my background. I can duplicate it. I can merge everything in the background, and then I can do things like invert it, image adjustment invert. You can try, you know, lots and lots of variations. There's actually a poster background I made for this one, which is this, which I like a lot. This is a combination of a lot of risograph scans that I have. That's a type of printmaking, because I like that texture. And you can see that there's a white border around it, which I like. And then I can just choose which coloring works better. And maybe I layer them into each other. So that pink comes through a little bit. like so. Or maybe I dissolve it. Kind of like that. It's a way to get texture in there. Do you remember that from digital coloring? I can also do that with my spot illustration. So I also have two placements of my character. You can be there or you can be here. And I kind of like that. It's a little bit more bold. I can duplicate that, can rasterize it, and then I can play with desaturation, push it in different ways. Why? All in order to change it to dissolve. This is on a duplicate. And then layer that on top so I get a little bit of that texture in there. Right, working around it. So I like that. And then if I want to change the black lines again, I can duplicate my vector and I can bring it up on top of at least my type, right? And then if I want to play with that, I can choose a different color overlay. Might be fun to play with kind of gendered colors. Do a gradient. And this time I can do pinks, but let's go for a really dark pink. Purples and pink. And I could just play with this for a long time, as designers do. Try to get get it looking more like what they want. And now I can set that, say OK, and I can rasterize that layer style so much. And then I can dissolve it and take its opacity down so I get that texture into my type. 